Hi, this is a PowerPoint video about uh, retirement. Uh, here you'll see some uh, people who are uh, about to or have retired. Uh, and uh, you'll understand why I colored these last few letters in gray. Uh, now this uh, lady over here, she's kind of grumpy. Uh, why? And these, this couple over here, they're kind of happy. Why? Well, what's she doing? Looks like she's, she's still at work. And these people, they're relaxing. So uh, we will talk about how you can prepare for your retirement so that you are like the couple on the right and not like the lady on the left. Let's talk about school and compare it to retirement. Are you sick and tired of class? You think this class lasts a long time, uh, 50 minutes or an hour, hour and a half? Are you sick and tired of school? You think school lasts a long time? School lasts from basically first grade to 12th grade. That's 12 years. You think that's a long time? You will work from roughly age 22 to age 65. That is 43 years. Do you think, I mean, given how sick and tired you are of school after 11, 12 years, do you think you'll be sick and tired of working? Yes. So will you probably want to retire? Yes. So let's look about, let's look at this. What is the point of this? This shows you years in retirement from, uh, from a lot of uh, rich uh, European countries in Canada and, and Japan and South Korea and Asia. And if you look at the blue, it says uh, this is back in 1965, 1970, people would only have about 10 years of retirement in the United States. Here you see the 10 years. So people would work to about 65, 66, and back then people died uh, at about 75. But these days with our improved diet and improved medicine, people are living longer. And you see here in America, it's almost about 20 years of retirement, okay? So are people living longer or shorter? Longer, that's great, but you have to, you have to pay for it. This is called the graying problem. It's great to live longer, but you have to pay for it. And when you're old, that often means you're sick and being sick is expensive because healthcare is really expensive. So you're gonna have to prepare for your retirement. How much money will I need to retire? You want to use the 80% rule. For each year of retirement, you'll need, on average, an annual income that is 80% of what you were making when you worked full time, 80%. After all, you won't be driving to work, you can save money on gas. You won't need nice work clothes, you can save some money, you can make your lunch at home, etc. So you don't need 100%, you need about 80% because you can save some money. If the average American earns about $60,000 a year, what's 80% of that? About $48,000. You'll need about $48,000 for each year of retirement. If the average American retires at 65 and lives to about 80, that's roughly 15 years of retirement. Who took care of you and paid for you during your first 15 years of your life? Mom or dad or mom and mom, dad and dad, whatever you got at home, it's all good. Will they be there to take care of you during the last 15 years of your life? Sadly, no. You will need to take care of yourself. So we have 15 years of retirement times roughly $48,000 a year. The average American will need about $720,000 for retirement. Let's round that to $750,000 to make it easy to memorize and because we live in a pretty expensive part of the country. $750,000, that's a lot of money. Are Americans saving enough to retire? Yes or no? Have they saved the roughly $750,000 they will need? Well, let's look at this. It's from 2016. One in three Americans has saved zero dollars for retirement. Look at this, a third, no retirement savings. 
Another quarter, 23%, is less than $10,000. And remember, you need about $48,000 a year, okay? Uh, we'll talk about this. Social Security will cover some of that, but uh, uh, less than half. And if you see here, the group that's in the best situation, they save $300,000 or more. Uh, that is not most people. It's only about 13%, uh, about one in eight people uh, have saved somewhere close to the $750,000 you're going to need. So a lot of Americans are in bad shape in terms of their retirement, and they're going to be grumpy working in their later years. <clears throat> this is another look. Are Americans saving enough to retire? And what I like about this is it breaks it down by generation, millennials, Gen X, and boomers and seniors. Here's an explanation of the generations. If you want to press pause, you can read that. Of the millennials, 40% of them don't have any retirement savings. Now, maybe you can say, well, they're young, they have time, but it really helps to put money in stocks and bonds when you're young because it'll grow over time. If you look at the boomers and seniors here, almost a third of them don't have any retirement savings. And those are people who probably are going to have to work and they won't be able to retire. All right. Another good percentage here, 30 percent, 22 percent, 17 percent. They've saved less than 10 fat. So, again, if you look over here to the people who save the most, it's really a small percentage of Americans. We need to save much, much more than we are for retirement. How can I save the roughly $750,000 I will need to retire? You, can, you need to save money in three ways. Since you're old and tired and you'll want to sit down and rest, we call it the three-legged retirement stool. So here's your retirement, and it's based on your personal savings, it's based on Social Security, that government program, and it's based on your pension plan. So the first leg, personal savings. But as we just saw, are Americans saving enough? No way. Social Security, that's money from the government. But remember, it's running out of money we probably won't get all the Social Security money that we are supposed to get. Regardless, Social Security is supposed to provide only about 40% of what you'll need in retirement, okay? So the government is not supposed to take care of you. The government's not supposed to provide 75% or 100% of what you need. It's just about a third, maybe 40%. But again, that program's running out of money. The last leg is your pension. Here you see it in red. What's a pension? A pension is when your employer, your, your company where you work, invests money in a fund and you get that money at retirement. Many Americans used to have a defined benefit pension and they work as follows. The company would basically say, worker William, you have, if you work at this company, for 30 years, then we guarantee that for every year of your retirement, we'll give you these benefits. We'll give you X dollars a year and health insurance, okay? And Worker Williams said, great, I'd love to sign up for that because you're defining the benefits and companies were happy to define and offer and guarantee those benefits before when people worked till 65 and died at 70 or 75. It wasn't that much of a commitment. It was five or 10 years. But now that people are living longer to 80, 85, and now that healthcare is so expensive, many companies are no longer offering defined benefit plans. Instead, they're offering what we call defined contribution plans. What are defined contribution plans? It's when you, the worker, contribute a defined amount or percent of your paycheck to a retirement account you set up for yourself. You can set it up with the payroll department or human resources department so that you contribute, let's say, 5% of each paycheck or $250 from each paycheck into your defined contribution retirement plan. 
Again, you are defining the contribution, maybe 5% of paycheck, 250, whatever. You can invest that money into stock mutual funds or bond mutual funds or funds that offer a combination of both stocks and bonds. But the responsibility, the burden to set this up, the onus is on you to set it up and contribute money into it. Companies are no longer taking care of the workers in this way because workers are living a long time and healthcare is so expensive. There are different types of defined contribution plans. Each one has its own costs and benefits. And this might look complicated, but it's not. Let's look at who's eligible. Are the contributions tax deductible? Are there limits to how much you can contribute? What does it invest in? Is the profit or growth taxed? Withdrawal, that's when you take your money out. And do you pay taxes when you withdraw the money? Is there a penalty for an early withdrawal? And something called mandatory required distributions, MRDs. Let me explain. Most people work at for-profit companies like Coca-Cola or Netflix or Apple or Facebook. And you can have a 401k retirement account, all right? And whenever you put money into that 401k, it lowers your taxes now. The government treats you as if you're poor, and so they tax you less. <clears throat> That's awesome. It lowers your taxes now, and you are preparing for your future. This is why these uh, retirement funds are really a good idea. Why does the government set it up like this? Why won't they tax you on this money? Because they want to incentivize you to take care of yourself so the government doesn't have to. Now, there are contribution limits. You can contribute up to $18,000 per year out of your paycheck. And again, it's great because the government treats you as if you're poor and that lowers your taxes. What do 401ks invest in? They invest in that company's stock. So if you work at Apple, your 401k is an Apple stock. Why is it set up like that? Well, what incentives does that create? It incentivizes you, the worker, <clears throat> to work hard, work well. You want the company to succeed because then your stock will go up or down, up. So it's good for your uh, retirement fund. Is the profit or growth taxed? No, it's not. That's another amazing feature. So for example, every paycheck, you contribute another $100 into your 401k at Apple. You get another $100 worth of Apple stock. As Apple stock grows and you get capital gains, you do not have to pay taxes on that growth. That's awesome. You don't have to pay the tax man when you put the money in, and you don't have to pay the tax man when the money grows. Withdrawal. You can withdraw after you are 59 and a half years old and older. Are you taxed to withdraw when you take the money out when you're over 59 and a half? Yes. You are taxed and you are taxed at income tax rates, not the lower capital gains tax rate. So that's the drawback. But it really, really helps you because you avoid paying taxes now when you put the money in. It grows tax-free for decades, decades. And then you pay the tax man when you're over 59 and a half and take the money out. Is there a penalty for early withdrawal? Yes. The government wants this money to just be for retirement. They're letting you put aside that money and avoid the tax man so it'll grow for your retirement. You can't take it out early. Well, you can, but there's a bad penalty. After you are 70 and a half years old, you have what are called mandatory required distributions. In other words, you have to take money out of that account. And uh, again, you're going to get taxed at income tax rates. 401k is a great idea. 457s are similar, but they're for city and state government workers. So for example, I work for the town government of Needham. I have, as a, as a public school teacher, so I have a 457. Uh, are contributions tax deductible? Yes, 
So when I contribute and I've got direct deposit set up automatically out of each paycheck, some money goes into my 457, it lowers my taxes now and helps me prepare for my future. It's a great thing to do. Are, they contribu are there contribution limits? Yes. You can put up to about $18,000 per year. You can't put more than that. You can invest this in any stock or bond mutual fund. Is the growth taxed? No. So again, you can avoid the tax man for decades. Uh, you can only take money out when you retire. Is it taxed to withdraw? Yes, it is. It's taxed at those higher income tax rates, not the lower capital gains tax rates. Is there a penalty for early withdrawal? No, there's not. You can take money out, but again, you shouldn't. You're trying to save that money for your retirement. Are there mandatory required distributions? Yes, when you're over 70 and a half, you gotta take money out and then you gotta pay taxes on that. But again, the money's been growing for decades tax-free. So you're gonna end up making a lot of money. Another kind of uh, defined contribution retirement plan is a 403B. That's if you work in a nonprofit, if you work at a school or a college or a university, if you work at a hospital as a doctor or a nurse, if you work in a religious organization at a church or a temple or a mosque, uh, you can have this retirement account. Again, you put money in, they don't tax you on it. It lowers your, it lowers your taxes now. You can contribute a max of $18,000 per year. You can invest it in any stock or bond mutual fund. The growth of the money in that fund is tax free. You can withdraw it after you're uh, 59 and a half years older. And when you withdraw it, it is taxed. But again, you have delayed paying taxes for decades. There is a penalty if you try to take that money out early. And after 70 and a half, you have to uh, take the money out uh, a little bit each year. Uh, so again, I'm a public school teacher, I'm a government worker, and I work at a nonprofit, I work at a school, so I have both of these, okay? All right, there are some other accounts, and uh, again, this is very, very important because this is a great way for you to save money. This is called a traditional IRA, and a Roth IRA and a SEP IRA. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account, okay? On this one, uh, almost anybody can do it. You just have to be under 70 and you put in pre-tax money. There's a limit of $5,000 a year. You can't put in more than that. You can invest it in stock and bond mutual funds and the profit or growth is not taxed. You take it out after you're 59 and a half and then it's taxed. Okay. So this is another great way uh, for anybody, regardless of where you work, as long as you're under 70 and a half. A Roth IRA is a little bit different. You must be earning under uh, uh, you must be earning money and less than one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And sometimes these eligibility requirements change a little bit. So we we should look at what the latest requirements are. Now here you pay taxes first, and then you contribute what we call after tax dollars. All right, so you pay your taxes out of your paycheck. Then you put the money into the Roth IRA. There's a limit of $5,000. You can invest it in a stock or bond mutual fund. The growth is not taxed. You can take it out after you're older than 59 and a half. Are you taxed at withdrawal? No. You paid taxes up front, but the growth of that money is tax-free. And when you take it out, it is tax-free. So the Roth is a little bit different, okay? You pay taxes up front, but you don't pay taxes later, okay? A SEP IRA, SEP stands for self-employed people, okay, self-employed pension, and you can put money in. The government will treat you as if you're poor, so that will lower your taxes now, and you can prep for your future. You would do this if you're a self-employed carpenter or painter or accountant or you have your own doctor's office. You can invest this money in a stock or bond mutual fund. The growth is not taxed. You can start to take it out once you're older than 59 and a half, and it's taxed at the income tax rate. So again, these defined contribution 
plans are excellent ways to save money because you avoid the tax man for much of the time. So what should you do? When you get hired, talk with the payroll department or human resources department and set up direct deposit to a retirement account, your 401k at a for-profit company, if you're a government employee, a 457, if you work at a charity, 403b, and if you're self-employed, you could do a SEP IRA, and anybody can basically do a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. Uh, then you know how to pick a mutual fund. You're going to look at a Vanguard or Fidelity mutual fund that's more than five years old, that has an expense ratio of less than 1%, so they don't charge you high fees. It's grown well. It's got an experienced manager and a good Morningstar rating of four to five stars. You want to max out your contribution. That is, save as much in these accounts as possible. They have great tax benefits that I just explained, so you'll make a lot of money. You also want to ask your employer, and you can ask the payroll department or human resources department, if they will match your contribution. For example, if for every $1 you contribute, they contribute a dollar, that's called a one-to-one -one match. If for every $1 you contribute, they contribute 50 cents, that would be a 50% match. But a lot of these companies these days, they want to get you smart, young people coming out of college. And so they will match and they will add to your retirement account. Ask them if they match. Again, you want to practice those dirty four-letter words, work, earn, save, wait, and with a little luck, you'll be rich. On the other hand, you know, what do capitalism and ads and companies and the media tell us to do? Buy, 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 buy. This is what we see all the time. Buy, spend, buy. But really, what should we do? We should be saving money. For example, if you start to put away money when you're 25 years old, investing just $75 per month, it's going to add up to a lot. All right. So let's look here at bonds. Bonds rate of return is 4%. They pay about 4% interest, uh, uh, a little bit less right now, but on average, historically, that's been their growth. If you at age 25 can start to put away $75 per month, it's going to grow to be about $90,000. If you wait and start saving at 35, you'll only have $70,000. So that's a difference of $20,000. Let's look at stocks. Stocks grow at about 6%. If you could put about $75 away in a retirement account, maybe a 401k, it's stocks or an IRA, and it's a stock mutual fund, that could be $150,000 by the time you're 65. If you only start to save when you're 35, and look, you're putting in $100 a month, you're contributing more, but you started later, you still can't catch up. Here's a $50,000 difference. So you want to start to save money in stocks and bonds when you're young. This is another reminder that $100 that you spend on booze or vaping or weed or whatever it is, that's not only $100 wasted, it's not only bad for your health, but that could have grown and grown and grown in stocks and bonds. Here's another one. Let's say, let's, could you save 5% of your salary? 5%. 5% is you saving just one out of every $20. Can't you do that? Is that that hard? I don't think it's that hard. Okay? So if you could do that, all right, and you let that sit for 30 years, 5% of your annual $50,000 salary, a lot of you will be earning more than that, that 5% would grow into $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars. But if you start later and just save for five or 10 years, the money doesn't grow nearly as much. Okay, you really should be able to save at least one out of every $20. Uh, this is the same point put another way. Uh, for example, 
This is the age when you contribute $1. If you contribute $1 at the age of 20 and you assume a 4% rate of return, which a lot of bonds pay 4% and a lot of stocks will grow at that rate, that $1 will grow to $5.84. Call it $6. You've gone from $1 to 6 and you didn't have to work another second. You just had to put that money in stocks and bonds and wait. All right? But let's say you save that dollar uh, when you're 55. And what's it going to be when you're 65? It's only going to be $1.50. Okay? So the earlier and sooner you can start to contribute, the better it'll be. Please try to remember, $1 saved in bonds at the age of 20 could become $6, okay? So the $10 or whatever you spent on weed or vaping or booze, that $10, that could have become $60. And of course, $100 could have become $600. You guys get the idea. Here it is again, okay? If you save... Uh, 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 when you're 25, okay, uh, uh, save $150,000 when you're 25, okay, it's going to grow to a million when you're 65. Now, your friend, they started saving later. They started saving at the age of 65, excuse me, your friend started to save at the age of 35, and so they only had 30 years and so their money didn't grow quite as much. You started saving less, but you started saving earlier. And so by the time you're 65, that $150,000, that could have grown to a million dollars. Where do most retirees spend their money in their so-called golden years of their retirement? Well, this is how most Americans spend their money. This is 2016, 2017. And you can pause if you want, pause the video and look at this. And this is how retirees spend their money. It's pretty similar. Here about a third is spent on housing. Here it's a little bit more, okay? It's pretty similar. You can check that out, okay? As you get old, you'll eat a little bit less, so the food goes from 12.6% to 12.3%, okay? Uh, if you look at healthcare, uh, before you spent about 8% of your money on healthcare, now you're older, you're sick, you might have some medical conditions, now you're spending 13% of your money on healthcare, okay? How much can you spend in retirement? You want to follow the 4% rule. The 4% rule says that you can, whoops, that's a typo. The 4% rule says that you can spend about 4% of your savings each year. I'll say it again. The 4% rule says you can spend about 4% of your savings each year. Why 4%? Because that means your savings will last you 25 years. Remember, 25 times 4 is 100. So if you're spending 4% of your money over 25 years, 4 times 25 is 100, you're spending 100% of your savings. And then you spent all your money. So if you retire at 65, spending about 4% per year, and you'll be okay until you're about 90. If you live beyond that, and you have your health and family and friends who love you, then you are rich in all the ways that matter. So taking a look at the big picture, you're going to have a lot of accounts. You're going to have a checking account. You're going to have a savings account. You're going to have stocks and mutual uh, bond mutual funds so that you can buy a house and send kids to college. You're going to have retirement accounts, maybe a 401k or IRA. You might have a couple retirement accounts. You'll have several bills to pay. You got to pay your food, rent, utilities, such as electricity, water, and heat. You have to pay your phone bill and your car bill, your student loan debt if you have that, mortgage debt if you get a home loan, credit card, you're going to have to pay taxes. It's a lot. Welcome to being an adult. It's time to get organized. I hope this was clear. If you have any questions, please let me know.